that all ends on the SAT. We have to be moving, moving quickly from question to question to question. And when I don't know sometimes, what I allow myself to do is incubate. So if I'm looking at a question and I'm seeing that, oh, two answer choices could work, clearly I am not reading this question correctly. So what I should do is I should abandon this question and I have this kind of discipline with myself that I go two questions forward where I allow myself to think about, like I allow my brain to reset, incubate, whatever you want to call it. And then I go back to that original question. So some students abandon and they never come back. But I just have this kind of rule with myself that it's two questions and then I come back because then I'm not paranoid that I'm going to forget that, you know, I have to make another decision when to come back. It's always two questions forward and then back. Unfortunately, here you can't do that because you only have three. But generally speaking, that's that, that, this is something that I would do. Okay, Marie, ready? Rebecca, yeah. good to know. Which one did you miss, love? Number two. Number two? Okay, cool. Marie, yes? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, honey. So I love teaching this question because I have a special name for these questions. Michael, remember what the name is? Shun questions. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, them, <laughs> why do we call them Shun questions? Uh, because correlation. When I first started to learn English, it was a shocker to me that T-I-O-N is pronounced Sean. I'm like, what do you mean? It's Tion. Because the first foreign language that I learned was German. And in German, as you write things, that's how you pronounce them. So it was always for me, uh, motion, emotion, <laughs> not motion, action. So correlation. And um, SAT really loves these two words, attribution and correlation. Attribution and correlation are very dangerous when they show up as a label on your y-axis. I know a lot of you are never doing this with the graph. You're not really understanding what's going on in the graph. And I used to do this exercise with my clients where I would just show them the graph and I would say, tell me what's going on here. Tell me the story of this graph. Marie, if you wanted to tell me the story of this graph, what do you think is happening? Okay, so the way that I saw it was like, I thought it was, I was like really confused. Because I read correlation between model predicted and participant reported enjoyment ratings. And I thought those were going to be like two different things. Like, they are, they, predicted. they are two different things. Correlation is a relationship, right? Correlation. So a relationship between X and Y. What is the X? What is the Y? Let's define those variables. Um, the X is the model predicted and then the Y is the participant reported. So X will be the score that the model predicted and Y would be the score that the participant gave. The participant is looking at a an impressionist painting. Let's just pretend this is an impressionist painting and says, I think it's a four. And then he looks at a modern a cubist painting and says, I think that's a four on the enjoyment level. But the prediction was, let's say for the impressionist painting, the prediction was one. And for the cubist painting, the prediction was four. The graph impressionist cubist. If I said four and the prediction was four for the cubist, the correlation would be up here, correct? And if I said four, but the prediction was one for the <clears throat> for the impressionist painting, would the bar be just as tall or would it, would it be a lot smaller? Uh, a lot smaller? A lot smaller. Very good. But hun, does that mean, though, that necessarily the participant enjoyed the impressionist painting more? No. No. Because we can replay the scenario and we could say, okay, the model predicted that I, I would enjoy them both at four, but I actually enjoyed the impressionist painting at, at one and I enjoyed the, the um, uh, cubist painting at four. And then it would look like this. Does but that like, make sense? I, I, I still don't get it because mm -hmm. why is it like zero? What does it mean if like it's like, wait, so P... The color is like changed based off like the person, right? And there's three people. Right. Participant. In this case, we only care about assuming participants P1 and P2 gave equal ratings to the impressionist paintings. The graph indicates that the model predicted. So let's say P1 
and let's say P2, they gave the same rating, P1, P2, let's just say A as an actual rating and M is the model. So they gave the same rating. So let's, what, what do you think they gave on the scale from one to four? I, I don't know. How would I know? Three. Three. They, they both scored the painting at three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we say P1, the correlation was high or low for the Impressionist painting? High. For the Cubist painting, was it high or low? Pretty high. It was lower. So the correlation was lower. So was the model more correct for um for the Impressionist painting or for the Cubist painting? It was more correct for the Impressionist. Oh, the, the um, I'm, I'm messing you up because it, there's only Impressionist painting that we're looking at. So the higher this bar, the more correct the model or the less correct the model? Yeah, that's like the main thing that I'm confused on. Huh? I, I think higher is... Higher. Like yeah that's right this means that there were the the prediction was very close to the actual and this means that the prediction was very far was quite far away from the actual we don't know what the actual and what the prediction was we just know that their relationship was very it, like it's not negative but it was very small okay. so this we could say it was similar or same and this one was different but we cannot say that participant two for example enjoyed the impressionist painting less than he enjoyed the cubist painting the only thing we can say here is that the correlation or the relationship between the actual score and the predicted score was stronger for the cubist painting oh okay i okay. love that sound so and let's just say cubist painting i rate it at one and the model predicts that i'm gonna love it at two then my graph would look like this. Let's say impressionist painting. I'm going to love it at four, but the model predicted it at one. Look, the correlation would be like this. The, oh my God. The height, I know. And that's why we call them Sean questions. Correlation and attribution. You made a rookie mistake. You thought that the length of the bar represents the amount of enjoyment, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you look at this thing and it says correlation, correlation is not how much how much you enjoy a, a particular painting. It's the relationship. Whenever I see Sean, I'm always a relationship. As I'm taking the test, whenever I see a Sean question, I'm always like, okay, it's a relationship. It's a relationship between X and Y. So let's now reread this really quickly. This neuroscientist, what's the verb in the sentence, honey? Developed. Developed. What do they develop? A model. A model. A model to do what? To predict how much a person will enjoy a particular work of art. Excellent. And then what did they do? Uh, recruited people to read it. That's right. And then the team calculated, <clears throat> drum roll, correlation between the ratings predicted by the model and the ratings reported by the participants with higher correlations indicating the predicted ratings were closer to reported ratings. Oh, wait, it says it right there. I know. Oh, I completely skimmed over that. Oh my God. Yeah, because you're like, oh, this is some uh, statistical stuff I don't understand. Probably. I don't know what's going on, what was going on in your mind, but it's right here. <laughs> and it's true for all of the correlation graphs, hun. Assuming participants one and two gave equal ratings, to impressionist paintings. Participant one and two, we're only looking at uh, at impressionist. We're, we're disregarding the cubist. They all always give you like extraneous data. We don't care about this. Participant one, correlation high. Participant two, correlation low. What can you infer? Oh my God, that's so simple now that you say it like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, would, it would just be B then, right? It would just be B. Oh, well. Take it, take it with you to the test, hunt. And it's always about correlation or attribution. You will have it in May. You will have it in June. I promise you. Wait, attribution is like, that's like the same thing, right? Well, attribution is when you, when you establish a cause and effect relationship between the cause and effect. So the attribution question was, um, there was something about developing urban land. 
it was due to the growth of the GDP. And then if the attribution is high, that means the growth was due to GDP. If the attribution is low, that means that the urban land development growth was not due to GDP. 